I believe that every nation needs a poet that speaks for its soul. I don't remember where, but I've read a quote that made me think. In the 19th century, when many new political nations were shaping, it was vital for their survival to have such strong voice. We remember these people in every country and in Ukraine, it is definitely Taras Shevchenko. He was born on the 9th of March 1814, 210 years ago, but his words are extremely actual and true now in Ukraine. My name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine. And I vlog daily since the start of the brutal Russian invasion, though it is nothing new, because Taras Shevchenko, the famous Ukrainian poet who lived 200 years ago, also fought with Russia. I hope this time the victory will be final. And let me introduce you to one of the greatest philosophers and poets of Ukraine. Taras Shevchenko was born in 1814. In a family of Grigori and Katerina, who were serf peasants in central Ukraine. His childhood was not very happy, but at the same time not that poor and problematic. An important reminder. Serfdom came to Ukrainian lands together with Russian Empire. Sometimes it seems to me that all of the problems in our lives are always from Russia. So, the family of Shevchenko was poor, but at the same time they paid much attention to the future of Taras. When noticing his specific talents that made him very different from other siblings, father decided to invest in his education and that's why small Taras, a serf, started education at school. That was important and that was pretty complicated, taking into account his background. He was not free. Taras Shevchenko orphaned when he was just 11 and approximately in that time he joined the landlord as the servant. It was the development of the career because he was not working in the fields, small children, even small children did, but he was a house servant and was able to absorb the atmosphere of the house. Actually, it was very surprising even for me to know that out of 48 years of his life, Shevchenko spent only 15 in Ukraine. And in 1828, together with all Engelgard, that is the name of his landlord, Engelgard household, he moved to Vilnius in Lithuania. In 1839, the landlord Engelgard decides to escape from Lithuania because of Polish and Lithuanian uprisings and moves to St. Petersburg, the heart of that time Russian Empire. And approximately in that time he notices the talent of Shevchenko to draw. He was extremely gifted in portraying people and still life. Not because of love to children or the decision to support Shevchenko, but because of the desire to have a house painter, his landlord invests in the education of Taras. As he draws and he visits various art galleries, gardens, and he is seen by colleagues painters, they very quickly recognize an unbelievable talent of Shevchenko. And I have to confess, honestly, I love his paintings more than his poems. He is impressive in the sensitivity of the plots he opens on these canvases. And just look at these canvases, at the talent of a person who was also the most prominent poet of his time. Unbelievable. The best painter and the best poet in one. Shevchenko has a lot of friends among talented painters in St. Petersburg and they realize they need to buy him freedom. And when he is just 24, they organize a lottery and from the auction they sell a canvas which price is equal to 45 kilograms of pure silver and this gives Shevchenko freedom. He is no more a serf. Honestly, for many Ukrainians, the biography of Taras Shevchenko is pure inspiration. Coming from very poor background, with lots of challenges on his way, 
He is capable of achieving his dreams, various dreams. He loves learning, he loves communicating, he loves traveling, and he is able to depict all that beautifully, either in the paintings or in his word works. In 1840, just two years after he gained his freedom, his central book collection of poems, Kobzar, which can be translated as ministerial, appears. And it is a sensation, not just on the local Ukrainian level, but on the European. And when I read the poems from this book, I'm always surprised at how intellectually developed he was. He is much smarter than me or any other ordinary Ukrainian now in times of internet. He knows a lot about ancient Rome, biblical stories. He knows a lot about geography, economy. He reasons about the development of the United States and what happens in Poland. He is very smart, very talented and very lively. For decades, a Ukrainian educational system poisoned by Soviet approaches always tried to depict Shevchenko only as an elderly man, extremely serious, never talking about love or fun. But in reality, he was one of the most fashionable men of the capital of Russian Empire. He had lots of love affairs, he had lots of trips, but at the same time he surprised people with his humanism and once again intellect. In the first half of 1840s, he travels a lot around Ukraine, visiting various historic locations, cities, and making sketches of that. He also writes a lot of poems, one of which are extremely known and treated as sacred in Ukraine, that is Zapovit Testament. Shevchenko reads a lot, knows a lot, notices a lot. He is a sensitive and smart person, and, of course, he sees troubles inside Russian Empire. And serfdom is the greatest. He knows what is it. That's why, in 1846, he joins the Brotherhood of St. Cyril and Methodius. This is a political and civil union that fights against the serfdom. Now, it's not difficult to guess. A Ukrainian freedom-loving, against serfdom, proclaims the importance of Ukrainian independence via his poems that become viral, depicts Ukrainian national characters beautifully on his canvases. Of course, he is the enemy. So just a year later, after the start of his civil and political activity, Taras Shevchenko is arrested by Russian Tsar police. He is questioned, he is sentenced to 25 years of military service and forbidden to visit Ukraine. What is more illustrative, Shevchenko is forbidden to write or paint. And this order is written by the Tsar himself in his handwriting. So the eternal enemy of Russian Empire is a smart, democratic, freedom-loving Ukrainian. Shevchenko was a symbol. During 10 years of Shevchenko's life, the years that could have been most productive, he is forbidden to write or paint. But of course, he breaks this ban. And from time to time, he is rearrested again and sent more and more far away from Ukraine. But he sketches, he writes, he thinks, he grows as a personality into one of the greatest poets of Ukraine and maybe the world. His friends all over the world work really hard to return Shevchenko back to normality, to take him out of this artificial military service and times outside of the cities. It's really difficult, but after the death of Tsar Nicholas I, Shevchenko is allowed to return for the first time to Moscow and St. Petersburg. But even after his release from this military service, he is persecuted. 
He is not allowed to write what he wants and often accused by Tsar police of writing too rebellious messages. They are always afraid of our words and our confidence and our strengths. And in 1859 Shevchenko is banned from visiting Ukraine ever. That is a tragedy for him because he is Ukraine. In 1860 there is the third edition of Kobzar. He is famous, he is renowned, he is quoted, but at the same time he is forbidden and hated. He concentrates on his artworks because that's safer, but in 1861 he dies. Ten years in very bad conditions influenced his health and his heart. Too many sufferings. He was just 47. He was just 47. He was constantly banned. But at the same time, the heritage that he left us is unbelievable. Thousands of artworks, poems and beautiful paintings. And the spirit. Because Shevchenko is one of the main reasons how Ukraine managed to survive the occupation of Russian Empire in the 19th century. Shevchenko is not just respected, Shevchenko is very much loved. And in every Ukrainian house, in different corners of the world, you will always find his Kobzar, the essence of Ukrainian philosophy and Ukrainian soul. I know there are many monuments to Shevchenko in different places. Let me know if you've seen the monuments to Taras Grigorovich in any of your countries, your cities, your oblasts. That is an honor. And please introduce me to your national poets. Thank you for all the support that we feel on this channel in our community. Thank you for buying me coffees and becoming my patrons. This is an honor. But most importantly, thank you for your support of Ukraine and desire to know more about us. Slava Ukraini!